Hi handsome and welcome to my 34th video, Red Players. I know, just by saying those two words together, you probably got an image in your mind that looks something like this. And I get it, you don't want to be associated with such a crowd. Thankfully, there is a way to experience what being a Red Player is like without actually being one. So let's talk about it. Now, as many of you probably already know, there are no advantages to being a red player outside of being able to go to the town Mui Kun, or Mui Kun, I don't know how to pronounce it, and talk to the NPCs there. But that's the only real thing why you might want to do this outside of just sheer curiosity. And being a red player has a lot of disadvantages as well, such as your gear downgrading or your crystals breaking in PvP. So be warned if you want to do this yourselves. If you are okay with that, we shall start with the methods that most of you probably already know. The protesters in Calpheon. There are a handful of them in this side of Calpheon with different names and a single kill will cost you around 7 to 15 karma based on the type of protester that you kill. So if you can stomach all the stairs and the clutter in the streets stopping your movement, there is nothing bad with choosing this option. That being said, you don't gain anything from killing these protesters outside of the ecology ranks and the knowledge and the energy associated with killing them. Another well-known method of losing karma is killing wild horses. A single killed horse will cost you 500 karma. It's not a bad way to lose it, but there aren't that many horses per server, so you will have to either hop servers a lot or move between areas a lot, possibly both. And I'm just gonna say it, this is by far the meanest method to lose karma, since they don't give you anything, you don't gain absolutely anything from killing them, and by killing them, you are also taking them away from the life skillers who want to tame them. So don't do this guys, okay? Be nice. Speaking of killing animals, let's move on to the more exotic and outer options for losing karma. Now I have no idea why this is really a thing in 2024, but for some reason you lose 5 karma every time you kill an animal while hunting in Kamasylvia. This is true for almost every wild mob in Kamasylvia, which includes the Chocobo wannabes, Ferinas and Perikas, the Peladona elephants as well as their baby versions, the Feather Wolves and Funils, and the Gazelles and even the Black Leopards. It does not count for the wild weasels or the special hunting monsters for some reason. And I probably don't need to say why you would want to go here since they are hunting mobs, right? So obviously you're gonna get rewarded with the meat and leather and feather. Although I will say that Kamasylvia is very outdated in the terms of money per hour. So I don't really know why for some reason you also lose karma as well. Although the amount of karma that you lose is very negligible, I will say. But the hunting mobs are not the only animals that you lose karma from killing either. The regular Kamasylvia Gazelle will lose you 30 karma per kill. Somehow, this one is more important than the wild variety of them, despite not giving you any meat or blood and being just tenable. So I really don't know why you would want to tan a gazelle, but at least you are getting something out of it, I guess. What is even more wild is killing the baby elephants in Valencia, which will cost you a whopping 2500 karma, and here you once again don't gain anything from killing them. I assume they are similar to horses and maybe this is how you get them if you want to have a baby elephant for a shy, but I'm not quite certain. So there you go. Next up, we need to move into the waters. In the sea, there are these small fishing boats that you can destroy. Destroying them will give you a decent amount of crow coins at the cost of just 30 karma. This is probably the most valuable thing that you lose karma from in this entire video if you want those chrome coins because you do get a decent amount for basically no time invested and like 30 karma is basically nothing it's like six mobs so it is actually quite good this is not not a bad way to get crow coins now let's move on to the reason why i want to make this video the forgotten mechanic that is stealing from npcs you can steal from a multitude of NPCs, most of whom are situated in the larger cities. Most NPCs in a city have shared loot pools, although there are some with special items, but I will let you figure out all of those yourselves. That being said, the reason why this is under the Iron Pan banner 
is because this is the only other way outside of workers to get coconuts. That is right, we are stealing because we need coconuts. To do this we need to go to Arehasa. Most of the named NPCs can drop the coconuts here, but the one I like to steal from the most is this Catfishman Fisher. To steal from an NPC, you need to go behind them and then press F6 or just click on the icon. It costs 12 energy to do so, and there is roughly a 40% chance that you will fail the attempt and get caught, which means that you will lose a thousand karma and a hundred amity of the NPC that you are stealing from. This Catfishman guy doesn't drop just coconuts, but also finish sub meals for the Arahaza meal, namely the coconut pasta and coconut fried fish, and he has a very small chance to drop the entire Arahaza meal as well. The chances to get these items aren't great, but it's the best that we have. With the Iron Pan intermission out of the way, let's have a look at the number one best guaranteed way to instantly become a red player. Now, you do need to flag up for this one, so if you want to see this video as more of a can you become a red player without flagging up or using Alt C, then this will not work for you and I would recommend going down the stealing route since that will most likely be the second fastest. But I won't keep you waiting any longer. The best way to instantly become a red player is by raiding a caravan in Valencia. A single caravan can make you easily go from full karma to red player, as killing every NPC in the caravan together will cost you around 320,000 of it. Just be warned when you decide to do this, because I wasn't ready for such a hit myself, so it was quite a shock for me, and now I am 100,000 karma in debt, and I need to go grind somewhere where I can go from Valencia, so that's great. Oh, and if you are wondering if this is worth to do, I heard that this was the only way to get the rich merchanting pieces, but that's obviously not the way anymore, so nowadays all you get is a handful of silver and that's it. So if you feel like that's worth it to you, go ahead and raid as many caravans as you want. I will never do this again. But with that being said, enjoy your new life as a Valencia bandit, make sure to go get that NPC knowledge in Mui Kun and enjoy the quests in there as well. I sure can't wait to do this on my Iron Man account where I need to do 100% quest completion in every region. I am sure that it's going to be very fun. But that is it for today's video. I hope you liked it. I am not yet sure what the next video will be as I do have a couple of ideas that I want to put into a video format but I have not yet decided which one I want to make first. With that out of the way, remember to like and subscribe, do let me know if there are any other ways to lose karma without killing another player that I have missed and enjoy your grind.